Frank hated the nine miscarriages kept in jars of formaldehyde. Mother burped each one, spooned peas against the glass. She rocked them all at once in her arms, no room for Frank. You are too big for a jar, my child. You will betray me the rest of your life. Frank throws pebbles into the map of the world and readies himself to ride new waves of ruin. Frank ate clear around the sleeping worm of the apple. Any life saved in this place is magic, Frank said. It's life coming back to you. Oh, the burden of nouns no verb can budge, Frank said. Like what, his sister asked. Corpse, he said. Toss the corpse. Let's play toss the corpse, she yelled. Oh, you got the corpse moving, he said. When will you learn, Frank? There is no noun a verb can't cure. <laughs> Frank hammers carrots all day. It works. The earth can't leave us. Frank's sister grew long blue feathers. She, did, she said it was worse than cutting teeth. She spent a month screaming in the cave, pushing them out. Frank would lie in bed at night, touching his own back, crying, praying it wouldn't come to him. But the day his sister flew to the house, he stood by the window in awe, giant blue spread coming in across the lake. He heard the hunter shot before she did. Mother knew where the next war was before Frank, by the colors they made her paint the airplanes. Father was drunk and yelling, and rule number nine, everybody dies. Upon hearing rule number nine, Frank suddenly forgot all other rules. Frank grew crows for hands. It was a difficult childhood. At dinner during prayer, his crows flapped excited in the name of the Lord. Frank, keep still, Mother hollered. Did you wash your crows? Did you wash your filthy, stinking crows? <laughs> when Father died, Frank was found straddling him, his crows picking the seven gold fillings. Mother's longer arm used to make a tick, tick, ticking sound, moving in a circle faster than the shorter arm. <coughs> On the bus, a man asked Frank for the time. He stared at his watch, held by the memory of Mother. When he looked up, the bus was empty. His beard was ten feet long. At the doctor's request, Frank stopped shaving the chair. In a month, it was the most comfortable chair in the house. <laughs> For love, Frank spoke softly into envelopes instead of writing letters. She was exotic company, her mouth full of mouse. Frank had never heard a word, his gaze steady on the mouse, disappearing to reappear with every syllable. Devoted, he prayed to God she'd marry him. But late in the night, she touched his hand. Frank recoiled and realized it was really the mouse in her mouth he loved. Is no one else sick of this paralysis of gravity, Frank asks. When I was a boy, I stepped into the sky. And I was a boy, not a surrealist. Part of the dream is that you accept your waking life as part of the dream. When Frank breaks into your house, he studies you with a flashlight, mister. You wake in a wig, freshly painted lips and nails, your wardrobe switched with high heels and satin. You are frightened and scream, though the hair on your chin is all he cut off. <laughs> Frank's skin turned yellow, orange, and red with the maple, oak, and sycamore. His wife secretly checked the life insurance policy. He arrived at the doctor's half-blind, brown, and crackling. It is no mistake you have come to my office 30 stories above the city, said the doctor. Relax by this open window. Autumn's ancient law has no escape. Pig says to Frank, this fence keeps you in your world. Frank says to Pig, this fence keeps you in your world. Pig says to Frank, this fence keeps you in your world. Frank says to Pig, This fence keeps you in your world. Pig says to Frank, This fence keeps you in your world. <laughs>